My name is John Ross with Finance on a Budget. One of the worst things that can happen to you in life is to get kicked out of your house. I mean, you bought your home several years ago and never expected to end up in such a bad financial situation. Foreclosure is a terrible thing to go through and nobody wants to deal with that kind of stress. It's embarrassing and you feel like a complete failure. My family and I went through a foreclosure because the banks did everything in their power to lie, cheat, and steal away our home. I actually managed to fight them off for over a decade. In this video series, I will share valuable information that will show you what you can expect to happen and how you can drag it on for years and how you might actually be able to keep your house. I will walk you through dealing with the banks, going through the mediation, and in a worst case scenario, what you need to tell the judge to buy yourself some extra time. So be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Then you will be notified about follow-up videos where I can give you all of my personal experience in delaying the court for more than a year. Yes, you can actually stay in your house for over a year mortgage-free, just by playing the game how the court wants it played. It's crazy, but stick with me. What is a foreclosure and how does the process work? Let's say you take out a home loan from a bank and buy a house. This is called a mortgage. If you miss a single payment, the bank will start calling you repeatedly, asking where their money is. Now, let's say that you miss several payments in a row. Aside from the constant phone calls, emails, text messages, and letters, they will also tank your credit score. But somewhere between missing one payment and missing six payments, you realize that you can no longer get caught up on your monthly mortgage payments. Your mortgage then becomes a defaulted loan. With a defaulted loan, foreclosure happens. This essentially means that your lender is now legally allowed to recover money owed to them by taking ownership of your mortgage property and reselling it. Default can also be triggered if you fail to meet the terms that are specified in your mortgage document. In essence, a foreclosure allows your lender to use the property as collateral in case you fail to upload the terms of mortgage. The process will be different depending on your state, but in general, you will receive a payment notice if you miss a month or two. You'll be presented with limited options on bringing the loan current and avoiding foreclosure. If you are only within one to two months, you can call up the mortgage servicer. They may offer you a payment structure that is $300 to $500 over your existing mortgage to get you brought up current. If you can afford it, great, do that. But in the real world, not so easy. What happens if you miss many mortgage payments? My personal experience is that you can actually avoid paying the monthly mortgage payments anywhere between six months to a full year before the bank files the first of the foreclosure proceedings. Just keep in mind that legally, they are only required to wait 120 days. As of this recording, there are options of forbearance that will simply tack on your missing payments to the end of the mortgage loan. However, in doing so, they will add a byline to your credit report that will effectively tank your credit. This is the usual bank garbage where they violate the intent of the law with the letter of the law. With the intent of the law, the government did not want any late information added to the credit reports. The bank said fine, but instead, they added to the description of your loan, noting that you haven't been paying them for the past few months. Sneaky, right? There are two main ways different states handle foreclosure. The first are judicial states, where the bank is required to file a lawsuit through your local courthouse. There are also non-judicial states, which means the bank simply needs to follow an out-of-court procedure to gain control of your property. As you may imagine, judicial states take longer to foreclose, and this is good news for you. I will have a link in the description below that will list out all 50 states showing what their procedure is. I am in Connecticut, so we went through the court system. For us, we were able to drag on our foreclosure longer than a year. Through the process of loss mitigation with the bank and court-ordered mediation, during the holidays and debating the entire validity of the loan, we were able to keep control of the property much longer than originally intended. This will be your goal as well. You can use this extra time to save more money or even turn your house into something that can make you extra money on the side. I'll have more on this in a later video. Loss mitigation and mediation. You can use loss mitigation to your advantage. This is where you submit all of your information to the bank and they see what kind of offer they can give you that will allow you to keep your home. This comes in the form of lower interest rates, balloon payments, and extending the length of the original loan. Connecticut will not properly start a foreclosure until you go to mediation. This is where a lawyer will go through your finances to see what you can truly afford. Then they will bring in a lawyer from the bank and they will give you an offer to reconcile the debt. Over the years, I've been through loss mitigation a few times. The offers range anywhere from bad to ludicrous, 
but if you can somehow work with the bad offer, you should take it and keep your house. The last offer I had was horrific, but we walked in there knowing that there was no way we were going to keep it. Anyway, mediation itself can last 30 to 45 days. We kept it going on for more than two months by creating larger gaps between meetings. My strategy wasn't to blast through at full speed. I was trying to slow down the entire process because I knew how bad it was going to end. However, if your situation isn't as bad as ours was, we owed about 65,000 more than the house was actually worth, then you should really try to keep it. Just be aware that the bank isn't gonna do you any favors. They just want as much of your money as they can possibly get. All total, in the end, I actually dragged on the bank and the courts through the mud for two and a half years before I finally gave up. I actually had enough with the legal proceedings and didn't wanna keep on fighting. I was tired and I hated going to court. I'm a smart guy and I hated playing a lawyer. It was a huge consumption of my personal and professional time. But honestly, they sold me an illegal loan as was acknowledged by several states. Depending on your loan in your state, you could actually get the court to hand over the house free and clear. This won't be easy though, only possible. More on that in a future video. My advice is during this time, you save as much money as you possibly can. You're going to need that money to hopefully avoid falling behind like this again in the future. At the very least, you're going to need this money to actually move. In my next video, we will go into the deeper details on what to expect during the foreclosure process. Be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thanks for watching.